As we learn to uh, listen to the Lord, we can receive many blessings and encouragements, words, and uh, let's thank you, uh, David, for sharing that. Reading from uh, 2 Corinthians, first chapter, starting in the third verse, this 2 Corinthians is probably one of uh, the Apostle Paul's most intimate uh, letters that he wrote. Uh, in 1 Corinthians, he dealt with a lot of issues with the Church of Corinth and a lot of um, important teaching and, and instruction and correction and everything. And in 2 Corinthians, he, he shares a lot about his own ministry and his own struggles and uh, this is, the, in the beginning of his letter, he, he pronounces this, uh, this word that is, is just uh, so powerful. So again, I'm starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as the suffering of Christ is ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. But if we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. Or if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is effective in the patient endurance of the same suffering which we also suffer. Our hope for you is firmly grounded, knowing that as you are sharers of our suffering, so you are sharers of our comfort. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of our afflictions which came upon us in Asia, that we were burdened excessively beyond our strength, so to even despair of life. Indeed, we had the sentence of death within ourselves, so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from such a great peril of death, and who will deliver us, he whom we have set our hope, and he will yet deliver us, and you also joining in helping us through your prayers, so that thanks may be given by many persons on the behalf for the favor bestowed on us through the prayers of many. the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus revealed to us his Father. He taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. He revealed to us that he was a Father who cared for us. And Paul understands this. And he, he says to us clearly that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father, is a Father of mercies, a Father of mercy, a God of all comfort. Can you picture God in heaven looking down upon you? What do you see? Do you experience God as comforting, as merciful, as kind, as compassionate, as smiling at you? Or do you see God as angry and disapproving, unhappy? Is he concerned about the troubles that you endure, about the suffering, the pain, the griefs, the sorrows that you go through? Or does he want you just to tough it out on your own? 
How do you picture God in your mind, in your heart? Do you realize that when you come to know Jesus Christ, Paul says in one of his scriptures that what, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. You are united with Christ. And Christ dwells in you by faith. You become a part of him and he becomes a part of you. So your troubles and your cares and your burdens are no longer yours alone. They're Christ's cares and burdens. He shares them with you. He carries them. When you have a problem, you come to the Lord, you say, Lord, we have a problem. We have a problem. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> you are in Christ. And because you are in Christ, you have a relationship to the God of Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, the God who wants to hug us and embrace us. Isn't that what we do when we comfort children or even each other? When they're crying and when they're sad and when they've been hurt, they run to their parents for an embrace, a hug to be held. Can you imagine and picture God hugging you, embracing you? Or do you feel like God is putting his hand out saying, keep your distance? <laughs> See, the, the problem many of us have is that we have a hard time receiving what God has for us. We, we've learned, some of us have learned to receive comfort and encouragement and from other people. As a child, with a parent comforting you after you were hurt, Maybe in a marriage relationship, in a friendship, someone who's willing to listen to you, to hear about your troubles, to hold your hand in a difficult time, to speak comforting words to you. And sometimes we, we just don't know how to do that in, in our relationship with God. We know that God is spirit. Yet God works in the same way. God wants to hold us. He wants to speak to us. He wants to encourage us. He wants to, us to sense his presence. He wants us to know that he is there for us in difficult times that he wraps his love around us, that he pours it out upon us. And, and he leads us into this understanding through, through scriptures that comfort us, but also through our times of prayer, our times of learning to listen to God, to speak to our hearts. He gives us visions and dreams and revelations and understandings of who he is and what he wants to do. This is what Paul had received himself. He, he had received this in many ways. If you study the life of Paul, you know that it was a very difficult life. And there were times when he was alone. He talks about a time when he was in the wilderness for many years. There were times when he was persecuted and he, he struggled with unbelievable challenges. And he shares a lot of that in 2 Corinthians. But he wants to start off with establishing the reality that God is a God of all comfort. That he comforts us in all our situation. And that, that comfort that we receive is, is not just for us. It, it's also to be shared with others. See, as we receive love, we're able to give love. As we receive comfort from God, we're able to give comfort to others. 
Paul was in a hard situation. He was in a a very difficult situation. He was very honest. He says, I don't want you to be unaware of how difficult it is for me, where I'm at in Asia, where, what we've gone through. He says that it was, the burdens were excessive beyond our strength, even to the point that we despaired of life. He was hard pressed in his life in that situation. And he honestly shared how difficult it was. And later in, in his letter, he shares more. He gets more personal. If you read in chapter 11, 24, he, he kind of gives a litany of his personal sufferings for Christ as he goes and travels and ministers and is an apostle for the Lord. He says, Five times I have received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent night and day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in dangers from my own countrymen, in dangers from the Gentiles, in dangers from the city, in dangers in the country in danger at the sea, and from false brothers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I have faced daily the pressures and my concerns for all the church. But in all that, Paul is not, he has hope. He knows that God has delivered him in the past. He knows that Jesus will deliver him in the present, and he has hope for deliverance in the future. He knows that God will comfort him in the midst of his sacrifices. Now, we may not be able to personally identify with some of these sufferings that Paul talks about, but there are Christians all over the world that are experiencing these things right now beatings and imprisonments and torture, death, in danger everywhere they go and whatever they do. But God is close to those who lean upon him, who trust him, who embrace him as the God of all comfort, the Father of mercies, the one who is there for you in every situation. Paul says it, it seemed like death was working in his life, but that's okay because we serve a God who is risen from the dead, who raises the dead. We, we may experience limitations ourselves, as it was said early, you know, but God isn't limited. God's grace is unlimited. His power, he's the God of all grace, the God of all comfort, the God of the Father of mercies, the God who can be powerful even in weakness, who can reveal himself even in hardship, who can make a way where there is no way. Paul understood that he saw this in his own life, and he wanted to share it with others. He understood the reality that what he went through himself personally was not just about him, not about just about his own relationship with the Lord. It was that, indeed, God does care for us deeply. But what he went through and the other ministers of the gospel that were with him because they went out in teams, what they went through was for the benefit of others that they may be a witness, that they may testify, they may share the good news to the poor, to those who are afflicted, to those who are sick and in need, and those who mourn, that they may share the good news that God is there for you, to comfort you, to strengthen you, to help you, to deliver you, to show you the way. Even when we are broken because of our sins, 
We can go to God because we have a Savior. We have one who has died for our sins. We have one who has atoned for our sins. You see, sometimes we think we're disqualified because of what we have done, because of our past. We, we rationalize in our mind and, and think that, well, that may be fine for Paul. Look at all that Paul did. Great, mighty man of God he was and all that he did for Christ. But I've fallen short. I've failed. I've been selfish and foolish in my behavior. I, a lot of the suffering in my life I can see is the result of my own bad behavior. Have you ever felt that way? You know, Paul, Paul felt that way too. He never got over the reality that he persecuted Christians for their faith in Jesus Christ, that he, he actually had some of them put to death. He remembered that he was a sinner. He remembered what he had done. And yet he allowed God to do mighty things through him. He didn't, he didn't feel disqualified. We're not disqualified because it's not all about us anyways. We are worthy only through Jesus Christ. We are worthy because we are forgiven in him. And when we stand away and we think God is, is always angry at us and always displeased with us and we cannot draw close to God, it is us who are hindering ourselves, not God, because he is there with his loving arms ready to embrace us, to receive us, he looks beyond what we see as barriers, as walls we've built between us and him. He has demolished those walls through Jesus Christ already. Those walls are invalid. We just have to return and allow him to embrace us. We have to accept what Jesus has done for us. We have to run into his arms as he shows us his love. We have to learn to hear from the Lord those words of comfort, those words of encouragement, those words to tell us that he loves us, that he embraces us, that he is pleased with us, that he has good things in store for us. It has to be a personal thing. It can't be just something you hear from others around you. You have to learn to hear it yourself as you come to the Lord in prayer, as you quiet yourself before the Lord, as you learn to listen and to receive those words that come to you from the deepest part of your heart. And you learn to believe what he says. And this is a journey we all are a part of. We all have been wounded and hurt and have put up barriers even in our relationships with each other. We get angry, we get bitter. We struggle with feeling like we can't trust people. And we, and we do the same thing in our relationship with God. And that's the kind of healing that God wants to do in our lives. He wants to heal the brokenhearted. He wants to set the captives free. He wants to open up prison doors. He wants to break every chain. He wants to set us free so that we can run into his arms and receive all that he has for us. Not because we are so perfect in ourselves. No, we're not. Because Jesus is perfect. And we, and we are in him. If you are joined to the Lord, you are one spirit. You are in Christ. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old has passed away. The new has come. Start to see yourself as God sees you. 
Start to experience the joy that he has for you, the laughter that he has for you, the pleasure that he has for you. He's not a grumpy God. (laughs) He's not negative all the time. He's a joyful God. He's glad. He's happy. You know, he's happy because he knows what's going to happen. He, he's in control. And he knows the victory has already been won through his son. His son has done everything that is necessary. We're just learning to walk it out. He knows the end from the beginning. He, he's been there. He's above time, folks. He sees what we will become. Not just who, what we are. He sees what, who we are in Christ. He sees what we will become. He has faith that we will become what he knows we will become. We don't have faith in that. See, that's the problem. We kind of say, oh, no, it's, I'm a lost cause. I'll never change. Well, stop saying that. <laughs> that's where your problem is. Because he is determined to complete the work that he has begun in you. So as we come to finish and sing this song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, just remember that we serve the God of all comfort, the Father of mercies, the one who embraces us, who wants to comfort us and strengthen us no matter what we go through, through his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.